Thrilled as always to have one of the most talented and likable chefs in the industry here with us in studio, the one and only Chef Mark McEwen. So welcome to the show. Well, I'm, I'm, I must have been behaved the first time. So you, you did have me back. I'm thrilled to be here. You were a good you boy. You were okay last time, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Before we talk about cottaging and barbecuing and all the things to do right. with kitchens, I want to know a little bit more about the books that you have available for people to read. Well, we've done two. Uh, Great Food at Home was the first book we did, uh, and it was sort of our best 100 recipes. And it goes, some of those recipes date back 15 years to North 44. Uh, so they've been crowd favorites. Uh, and we simplified a lot of them that you can do them at home without stressing too much about the intricacy of the recipe. And I was so thrilled last show when you said that your favorite thing to make is a great sandwich. <laughs> that actually gave me some hope. Yeah. So when I'm looking at this, you know, great food at home cookbook, is this something that I can handle? No, what I, what I find with recipes is, is if, if it's very chefy, people really shy away from it. If I can simplify the recipe in a way that they look at it quickly, they sort of vet it and say, yeah, I can do that. Okay. They engage the recipe really well. So we try to tailor everything in that in that fashion. Now, that was your first book, right? Now you've got the other one, which is Rustic Italian? We did a book based on Fabrica, which is my restaurant at the Don Mill Center, right okay. across from my food store. Now, no, Italian well. is my favorite. I, I love Italian kitchen for a good Scottish, Canadian, American boy. <laughs> uh, sort of confused breeding. I We do pretty well in the Italian kitchen. All right. Now, let's also just cover a little bit about what's going on with your show. So Top Chef, Chef Canada. Yep, Top Season Chef four. Canada. We, uh, Matthew won this year. He, uh, a screaming. bit of a nail-biter. Well, it went down to the finish, and, and not everybody was happy with the results. You know, you know, based on, on uh, interpretation of television, you can sort of tell a story in a variety of ways. Mm -hmm. To me, Matthew was the clear winner, but maybe the show didn't show how clear that was. So okay. Dan, Danny Smile from Montreal, he's a very, very popular contestant. And why is it to you that he was a clear winner? Well, he's a true chef, and, okay. and I'm there as a chef judge, and it's for me to maintain the integrity of the show from a cooking standpoint. And I, I know what television is and what a personality is great for TV, but end of the day, it's still a cooking show. And for me, the most valuable thing is that we have street cred in and amongst the chefs, and they know. So even Danny knew that, that my decision was the right decision mm -hmm. or the panel decision was the right decision, mm -hmm. and I think we can hold our head up. But there's a whole bunch of people that... Don't agree with me right Isn't now. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. But at the end of the day, as you said, you're a chef looking for the top chef. So yeah, you have to stay true to that. Sure. And when you edit a television show, you edit it in a way that you, you create mystery. And, mm -hmm. and, and it's, as you said, you want it to be a nail biter to the end. So maybe maybe we bit off too much nail there. I think you succeeded. Know, it was fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. It was entertaining. It was really entertaining. Yeah. All right. Then let's just talk about also your restaurants and also your grocery store. So again, remind us. Well, I still have North 44. I've had that 23 years on, on Young Street, which was sort of the, the baby that helped me build everything. Uh, second restaurant is Bymark down in Wellington Street in the Financial District. Uh, still love that Bay Street bar crowd. Mm. Uh, it's a beautiful place. Uh, then I have Fabrica, which is directly across from McEwen Foods. And I have one in, in Yorkville, right on Yorkville Avenue at the Hazleton Hotel. That's it, huh? Well, for now, <laughs> we, 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 uh, we're actually taking over all the grab-and-go food at Airport uh, Terminal 1 and Terminal 3, and we start on the 22nd of July. I oh, wow. love you. So if you buy a salad, <laughs> you buy a sandwich, you buy a cookie, you buy juice, you buy whatever, it'll be our product. Is we make that it, right? We make it fresh every single day. Wonderful. Yeah. Well, yeah. congratulations. All right. So let's go now and flip things a little bit and talk about what we love, because I know you're an avid cottager. Cottage country. Okay, absolutely. For some people, it's a three-season cottage. For some people, they only get up there on weekends. What are the essentials I need to keep in my kitchen? So when I come up on the Friday, I've got what I need to be able to function. So in terms of ingredients, what can you suggest? Okay, for me, I do a lot of barbecuing. I do it in the winter as well. So whether you're lucky enough that you have a gas line or you have to run it on propane or propane tanks, or charcoal, which to me is the premium. If you, if you can invest a few more minutes in your game, I would go charcoal with wood. So charcoal is definitely better. Natural charcoal right. with a wood accent is, is really easy for people. A true wood fire is a bit more difficult, mm -hmm. but food tastes amazing off it. All right. Just takes a little more time to cure your coals. So I, I would start with a good barbecue, uh, generous uh, top grill space, and an over rack of some sort. Okay. So you don't have to blow your brains out in terms of spending money to get a, to get a fantastic barbecue. Uh, it just needs to be a good proportion uh, in terms of its sensibility and how you relate to it. Now, Mark, can you cook everything, so your whole meal on a barbecue? I try many, many times to do that. And? Uh, I'll even cook my basmati rice on the side with scented basmati on the side in a pot with a lid on it. And I'll grill my asparagus, I'll grill my tomatoes, I'll barbecue my meat. And with that over rack, I can just sort of time things that, for example, if I start with corn on the cob and mm -hmm. I get them all barbecued, I put them to the cool section. Then I get my meat done, my, my asparagus is marinated, it goes down, 
not with the bars, but across the bars, so it doesn't fall in, right? So Very we, easy, up top again, boom, 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 your dinner's on the table. Okay, you make it sound really easy, but at the end of the day, you can do everything on that barbecue. So there's no excuse. You can be outside cooking and literally, you know, and, breathing and in the elements. And drinking a beer. <laughs> very, very important. Have a beer. I, I always cook better with a martini in my hand at the cottage. <laughs> <laughs> at least I think I do. Yeah. But I, I, I pick my proteins from the city, okay. and I usually bring them up. Or I go to a local butcher if, if need be. And I, I love to support the local business people around my cottage. So even though I own, own a grocery store, the last three times at the cottage, I went out and I bought all my own produce and I bought meat uh, from Black Angus, which is right on Highway 26. And it's so Thornbury. it is support. Like it's important to support. I mean, these are the people that feed us. At the end of the day, they're the ones that work hard to make sure that we can have food on our table. Well, you have a great sense of community in, in a cottage in a cottage area, and you need to know all these vendors. It's important that you have the understanding of the fabric of the neighborhood. So I I, I buy local produce. I buy local protein if I can. I support everybody in the community. And we cook simply. We cook with lots of vegetable and salad and smaller portions of protein, which I find very easy to handle. You can prep it ahead of time because cottage country dinner should not be stressful. Uh, you, should, you should never stress yourself out. You should, you should stay within your wheelhouse, things you're comfortable with. Uh, you know, if you can buy local fish, like I can go into the town of Meaford when the fishing boat goes in, mm-hmm. and I can buy a lake trout, a whole fresh lake trout, bring it home, wrap it, on the barbecue, bake it. I can buy local asparagus, tomatoes. I can make a dinner that is just spectacular. So everything fresh. Everything fresh. Whatever you see there, grab right. and literally exactly. just play. Now, when you get that stuff to the cottage, what should have been in your cupboard to help you know marinate and make everything so fantastic? There must be what you call the standard ingredients that every kitchen, whether it be a cottage or a city, yeah. should have. Well, if, for me, you have to have kosher salt. You have okay. to have good olive oil. You should always have a couple tins of San Marzano tomatoes. You should have good dried Italian pasta, like really good quality. And then in terms of being able to make a dry rub for a steak or for a fish, have interesting uh, Middle Eastern spices, Asian spices, rubs, cumin, uh, coriander seed, ground. So you can, you can mix around. And, and so if, if I have a big piece of beef tenderloin going on my barbecue, I'll do a dry rub spice. Rub it an hour before, two hours oh, before. Okay. Leave it in the fridge. Let it just soak in. I'll salt it really well 20 minutes before it goes on the barbecue. Another smatter of olive oil across it, and then away you go. So really, really simple items. Uh, good vinegars, good oils, good basic dry uh, spices that are ground, or you can have the capacity to grind them to make those rubs. Good basics, really. All right, now let's talk about what we call the cottage kitchens because um, doing real estate up in cottage country, right. they, they are very different <laughs> and you see it all. Mansions on the water. They, they can go from mansions to, again, just the bare essentials. So what can you suggest in terms of when we're talking about whether it be three season, four season, but what are those essentials in those cottage? And I'm sure that relates to city homes as well. But well, you know, a fancy kitchen doesn't make a good cook. So in terms I, of, I am I'm evident of that. <laughs> <laughs> so good essentials. If if you have the option for gas, I would always I would always go for gas. Okay. I like a good six burner stove. I think things like griddle plates are a big waste of time because you can always take a big large uh, nonstick pan and achieve what you need to do rather than have this this funny griddle plate that you don't relate to. Okay. Um, large oven, maybe two if you have it. Just counter space, and then I always look at it as a triangle, say a five foot triangle between sink stovetop, work counter. And then my refrigerator would just be outside of that triangle. So you want this very simple space to function in. So your pantry cabinet is there, your refrigerator is there, your countertop is there, you have a nice big generous sink, you have a six burner stove. And that can be a high-end stove, it could be a, it can be a wolf and it could be an inexpensive electric because mm. all you have is electricity. That's right. So if you're set up that way, you can really cook as, as well or better than anybody. It'll be based on your skills. And at the end of the day, it is it is wonderful to be able to, while cooking also, to be able to engage with your guests and the people that you're, of course, hanging yeah. out with, right? So I'm sure that's an important aspect as well. Our family cottage at, at Turkey Point, Ontario, uh, just outside of Port Dover, was a simple little rectangular box with shutters that went up in the front. We had a four-burner electric stove and one of those electric uh, Non-stick pans that everybody had with the casserole top on them. We had, had the we'd, we would have the greatest meals off a picnic table in the kitchen. Mm. So linoleum counters, very little space to work in. So cottage kitchens are charming. They don't have to be city kitchens, but if they happen to be, 
um, you can go you can go nuts in your kitchen in cottage country as well. Now I have to ask you because I grew up, especially in the winter time. I've been cottaging my whole life, and we love the winter just as much as the summer. And my mom would yeah. make in a crock pot and would literally just make this incredible stew. And she'd get it going before we left. By the time we were done our six hour you know snowmobiling you know tour, we'd get back, and boy oh boy. It, it was so good. And sometimes I felt it was better the next day, you know, it, when we'd reheat it. Oh, you so make a buco, you make a, a lamb stew or a veal stew or a big vat of chili. Or you come in out of, out of the cold weather and you have breakfast for dinner. Exactly. Bacon and eggs for dinner <laughs> in the middle of the winter in cottage country is, is a beautiful thing. I'm looking at Simon salivating over there. <laughs> <laughs> I want to get this over with so I can go have bacon and eggs. Yeah. <laughs> You're ready to eat, yeah, right? Yeah, absolutely. Well, a pleasure as always. Thank and you. I think next time we're going to have to figure out something even more interesting. Uh, well, you said we're going to cottage country. I think we're going to have to come to cottage show? country. Yeah, but there has to be food that we're actually eating during the show. <laughs> so I'm I, in. Uh, yeah, so Mark, we'll are you all over that? Okay. Next time you invite me back, I will bring food. We will we will eat and, and actually talk. eat and try to talk while we're here. doing this. Yeah, I yeah. love it. Why Absolutely. not? Yeah. All right. So next time. It's a date. Thanks for coming All in. All right. Great, Great having you, buddy. Yeah. Thank you.